goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. Just mind your own business, man. And uh, a big business that grew up as we grew up um, was the business of wrestling, sports entertainment, uh, wrestling, professional wrestling, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, man, I've been watching a lot of these A and E biographies and um, Dark Side of the Rings lately. Oh, mm. uh, wrestling, and it just got me kind of feeling nostalgic. Nostalgic. So, uh, as two fellow wrestling fans um, that you guys are, um, I want to just have a quick convo on some wrestling this week, man. Um, who is the best wrestler ever, and why? Hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 All right. I can start off with I would say my three my three favorites or whatever, and that would be Undertaker, Stone Cold, and The Rock, or whatever. I f- feel like The Undertaker would probably be the best because he has the longest reign, and he's as insanely unbelievable his storyline is. He's so good that in that moment, you believe it. You believe that he came from fire and brimstone to whoop somebody's ass. Like, mm-hmm. The only time that I say it wasn't really believable was when he was the American badass riding around on the motorcycle. But I still kind of liked it because who doesn't like a motorcycle and then somebody was beating somebody's ass? Just the bottom line. <laughs> it was one of my favorite interests on the game. All right. Um, and then... The close to that would probably be Stone Cold because it was just his error. He just like he went from Brian Pillman to this. This is the archetype of if you're not Undertaker, what a wrestler should act like and perform. And as far as story go, as far as like being one of those um, locker room leaders and stuff like that or whatever. And then and then as far as The Rock, The Rock is more, I would say, more showmanship, per, pretty much. Like, he has the most ridiculous move ever. But it's just, <laughs> he got that showmanship, you know what I'm saying? What not? I would say an honorable mission, it might be Hulk Hogan, but he said nigga, so fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> so did Booker T. <laughs> we coming for you, nigga! Nigga! <laughs> <laughs> one of the greatest moments in wrestling history. I mean that, yo, that's up there with the uh, what was the dude's name? The, the uh, dude that bust through the wall and fell. He had on the stormtrooper hat with the glitter on back in the day. Uh, um, um, supposed to be Sting and Lex Luger partner, I think. Um, yeah. was it WCW? Yeah, that was but- WCW. It was like back in early. WCW though, it was like it might have been before they changed the name to WCW. It might have still oh, been Jim Crockett Promotions. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Crockett. Wow. Um, but anyway, um, so my favorite wrestler, the best wrestler to me of all time is The Rock. Um, mm. when you talk about kayfabe, um, the fact that he was able to make such a move that was supposed to be a rib on The Undertaker. And to a finisher move that was sold by everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, like fans were marked out over that move. Like, that's pretty, that that is the epitome <laughs> of what a wrestler should be able to do. It's, it's up there with the Hogan leg drop. It's like, are you kidding me? But you that over that you can get that you can sell that and the crowd go with it. <laughs> um, I also think that. As far as like athleticism, he's up there. As far as like his overall skill set in the ring, like he had, he he he's he had, he took bumps well. Like he could mm-hmm. he could wrestle in any type of a match, whether it be a submission match, whether it be a a, a hardcore match, whether it be a, just a technical wrestling match, whether it be just whatever he could wrestle in it. You know what I mean? Like it it was nothing he really couldn't do as far as 
types of matches he can make look good. Um, and then obviously a big part of being like one of the best or, or, or putting your name up there, you got to say like how, how over were you with the fans and how well were you able to like sell merch and sell out stadiums? And I think like he's top three, you know, it's like it's him, Hogan and Stone Cold as far as the three biggest box office wrestlers that we've seen overall. Like, you know, Ric Flair had his run in the South but, mm-hmm. like, when you're talking about, like, a global superstar type shit, them three, it, it's hands down them. So, like, when you got your name up there in the top <clears> three and you wanted to – and you could put on any type of match and you were able to sell, like, <laughs> you, you you were so deep into kayfabe and such a good wrestler at selling. And, and that's pretty much what a wrestler is, an ability to act so well that you sell us on whatever you're doing and make mm-hmm. us believe it. And we believe that a damn slow ass elbow drop that barely touched the opponent was gonna <coughs> knock everybody out. And if you kicked out, it was people's amazing. elbow. You see what I'm saying? Like, like that is what wrestling is. So uh the rock for me, and he black. So you know, you know, you can call it what you want to call it, Samoan, black and Samoan, Samoan, whatever, however you want to call it. He's the nigga black. paid actor. And he was, and he's the biggest crossover success as far as leaving the WWE and being able to I, I think his name in outside arenas. So I think overall <clears throat> The Rock, maybe. That's my guy. I, I think The Rock is like like a bar. Like how rappers, they say, you know what, I want to reach Jay-Z status or whatever. That's The Rock to me. He's, Jay- That's, he's Jay-Z of wrestling. Like, if you are um, uh, a wrestler coming up or whatever, your dream is to do like The Rock. Basically, like you don't have to do it exactly like him, but at least have like the same, the same like achievements and success, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Just in general, I would be in movies and be the action hero of all, greatest action hero of all time, too. Like, dude, he's better than Arnold Schwarzenegger right now. (laughs) Right. Go ahead, Faith. No. When we're talking about best wrestler ever and last. Um, I look at it two different ways. Cause I got my favorite wrestlers and I got my contender for the best wrestler ever. Now, my favorite wrestler is Sabu. Mm-hmm. Came to WWE and whatever, WWE, whatever what you want to call it at the time. And did his damn thing. We're doing it so well. It's like we can't have him here. Uh-uh. Because he was going to be a... Uh, a liability because <laughs> go hard. Um, and, and from um the IWGP from Japan, the Great Moon. He was also in the WCW for a stint. Um, especially with that crossover Japan and w- WCW stuff was going on big time. Him staying at Big Rivalry. Um, New Times. Uh, Undertaker, of course. I'm a real Undertaker fan, and and low key Ric Flair fan. Now, best wrestler ever. I'm gonna go with Ray Flair. Um, he spanned decades and generation of gen- uh, generation of wrestlers. He's been wrestling with first through fourth generation wrestlers. You feel me? And still giving the same performance. Um, still hit you with the same moves. You really expect us to believe that? Damn, they're 80 years old. You were really going toe to toe with the Big Show. You really that <laughs> way. You can sell it and still try to put that figure four on him and still try to try to do it. You feel me? Like he's been in several different several different brands. And the the end what is it? In NWA, the the WCW, the WWE. I think he was in the AWA too. He went to Japan for a while. You feel me? So I mean like Rick Flair got to <clears throat> put the time in, had it had the WCW Heavyweight Championship, WWE Champion, Heavyweight Championship. I think he had the WCW Television Championship. I believe he had a Tag Team Championship as well. I believe he had the Intercontinental Championship for a little bit too. The WWE. And then like low key, Ric Flair do some do some things. He he's been in a couple rap videos. Um, he's like Ric Ric Flair is a cult. Like he got a cult following. He's like he may not mm-hmm. be a big movie, star, but he, you ain't gonna go nowhere in the world not know who Ric Flair is. I mean, if you see Ric Flair, you know who Ric Flair is. <laughs> That's one of the most marketable best wrestlers. Okay. Um, 
when we're talking about wrestling, you know, a big part of wrestling is not just the individual, but also the group or the team. Uh, what is your the best faction in wrestling ever? The best faction. The best can we, faction. Can I, have, can I have a question? Can we do the best faction and the funniest faction? We can add funniest to it. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you can give both if you want. I'll go both. <laughs> yeah. the, funniest, the funniest was the Nation of Domination. That's yes. The <laughs> Before or after Owen Hart? With D-Lo Brown. Nugget, nugget, nugget. They're the funniest. Now, the best, I mean, it's a toss-up between, like, three three factions for me for the best, and I can't really decide between these three, but you got the Four Horsemen, um, the original Four Horsemen, not not the variations with Dean Malenko and all them. The you talking about, the, with, you're the, talking about with Tully. Mm. And yes. When, when Ole was still with him. Mm hmm. The original Four Horsemen. Um, the, Ministry of, the, the Ministry of Darkness with the Undertaker and everybody. Uh, before they start taking in all the randoms like Viscera and all of them. Like, <laughs> you know, when, he, when he first had the core. Um, and what's the other one? What's the other one? Uh, another one from WCW. Um, I think it was the Midnight okay. Express. The they belong the Midnight Express was long to him, but it was another it was a bigger faction. You feel me? Like you had Rick Rude was with him, the Midnight Express, and a couple other dudes with him. I forgot that um that faction name. But that was a that was a great faction too. To like, I feel like I know faction. what you're talking about. Midnight Express, I do remember that name though. No, that was a tag yeah, team, was, but it was a part yeah, of this group, team. and it was like a bunch Probably. of like all of the heels in one of them like mm-hmm. southern wrestler promotions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was, but it was and like some heavy hitters in that shit. Mm-hmm. Big big boy, big boy. <laughs> damn, damn, I can't. I know what you're talking about though. Yeah. So them, them, my three factions right there, man. Like each, <laughs> they just kept doing their thing in their time. And something like the four, the original four horsemen, they was like <clears throat> style and the profile. They, they were the definition back then of what a, what a faction should be. Um, progress a little bit forward. That other faction I'm talking about from the WCW with the Big Night Express and um, Rick Rude, they was in their time what a, what a faction should be with the outside interference holding each other down. They had they had multiple titles in the faction. You feel me? It was holding on the gold. And then you move forward to the Ministry of Darkness. Undertaker has a crew. So, I mean, like, yeah. and it was all on the same wavelength as him. That's just some cool shit right there. Like, you got all the darkness right there. Like, <laughs> he was drinking niggas the water, bro. <laughs> he kidnapped Stephanie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they was wilding. They was wilding, yo. Um... Okay. Uh, uh, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Um, I can't remember the name of them, but the funniest to me is that group that had the when the giant first came out, and they had the Yeti, and they had the Chain Gang, and they had Earthquake. Um, and they had like all of these. Um, oh, they had Brutus the Barber, Beefcake, and the Zodiac. Them. Kevin Sullivan, Kevin, Kevin yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. With the oh. Taskmaster and all that shit. The, the Dungeon of Doom, yeah. was that it? Yeah. Was it the Dungeon of Doom? The Dungeon of Doom was the funniest to me when they had them big <laughs> niggas and they were just shaking no Hulk Hogan. They was like, <laughs> <laughs> that shit was like the lowest moment in wrestling to me. Like, I was like, yo, that was when you knew, like, if something don't change in wrestling, Everybody about to start watching this shit because it was like getting to the point where like even as like like I think me and Face at this point we may be in like what's that like ninth grade or eighth ninth mm-hmm. grade or something like that somewhere in that range but like our, every all of the kids that grew up on Ultimate War and all that shit, like we waking up now so like hey man, what the fuck is this these niggas <laughs> just gyrating on this dude trying to act like they hurting him like no you just shaking up. You was dry humping this man, sir. The fuck? Uh, 
that is not a finisher. So like when it got to that point, like it was like <laughs> they, yeah, it was. I feel like that faction set the stage for us to get factions like the Blue World Order and the Oddities, where you just got weird shit going on just for the sake of weird shit because we accepted that bullshit from them with the spooky, with the fake smoke and this weird cave backstage. And just just dumb stuff that we accept. We accepted a Yeti that was really a big man and wrapped in toilet paper. Like it was just <laughs> like, what were we doing? Like, come on. So like that was the funniest to me. And then like the best faction to me, even though it didn't last very long, was the original New World Order because they set the stage for the Attitude Era. They set the stage for us to get for ECW to finally get accepted. Not that ECW wasn't already there, but ECW took off because the, the, the infusion of people that wanted to see realism came from the NWO when they first, first happened, when it was the outsiders and Hulk Hogan had first got announced. After that, when they started bringing in Rick Rude and Virgil and like all of these, like they were just bringing in anybody that had left WWF ever it just became convoluted. But like that first iteration when it was just them three and, <laughs> and they just had that first commercial with new, 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 new world order. Like I remember sitting there and it was, it was the first time we had saw live wrestling too, where like the story was unfolding live and you really didn't know what was going to happen no more. So like, I remember sitting on the phone and we'd be on them, you know how like back in the day, you would have like 30 people on the phone on like, Everybody got on three ways, so we everybody just be on the phone talking. But we used to be watching wrestling and shit. And <clears throat> I remember sitting on the phone with a face like, "Man, look at that shit. These yo, that's Razor Ramon. He on the and, and flipping back and forth between USA and TNT to see like, yo, what's going? Hold on, why is he over here? Like I remember the and, and I remember like." You did. You legit didn't know what was happening because the Montreal screw drop has just had just happened, mm-hmm. and Razor and Diesel had just left. You had the fake Razor and Diesel going over in WWE, so you was like confused as hell as a like, what the fuck is going on? Oh, these this is the real. Th- so this, oh, oh, they for real. Like it, it brought a whole new level of realism to it. Like so like and after that then you got stone cold and this few with Bret Hart kicking off shit over in uh WWE where we started seeing more of that the shotgun Saturday night kind of helped the spot there but like yeah that in that, that first iteration of NWO I feel like just their impact and the way they completely changed the way people looked at wrestling from a from a all around standpoint the way wrestling was produced change because of that because WWE had to change its format mm. to keep up with Nitro at that point. Like it was like the, it started the Monday Night Wars. Like it, it was the it, the reason we wrestling looks and feels the way it does right now started when Sky Hall came out and said I got a big surprise coming for y'all. And nobody knew he was talking about Kevin. Like that first iteration of NWO was like the coolest faction ever because it was like mm-hmm. these. You legitimately felt like these dudes can really take over the whole wrestling game. Like they, they are for real. They, they just come in and beat people up. All right, I like this. So yeah, that was that's my that's my opinion. I'd say. I'll say I do agree with the NWO as like one of the greatest factions and my favorite faction and I feel like might be one of the funniest factions is the Generation X. Like that, they they had everybody in the school just doing this and telling people <laughs> <laughs> and the teachers didn't know what was going on. Like, if you didn't like them, if you liked them, if you like them if you ain't know nothing about wrestling you still walk around doing this and stuff like that which was <laughs> x and everybody was into x you got two x-men. words for you <laughs> <laughs> or whatever and it, it was awesome people still do it to this day like i yeah. just because of that like that's how i found out about the generation x or whatever like where the hell did you get that from i know i seen that and then went back to went back into looking into wrestling again or whatever. I was like, oh, 
got to keep up <laughs> pretty much. But yeah, their antics, they're hilarious. And they were, they were around Norfolk one time, and I respect that. Oh, yeah, when they had the tanks. And, and the scope. <laughs> uh, and and they, they invaded, Um, that was when they invaded uh, WCW, because they were at the scope in Norfolk, whatever, around. But yeah, those are my those are the two memorable factions. And anytime Undertaker was in something, because who's yeah, gonna stop? <laughs> Undertaker was that guy. Um this is my next one. What is your favorite wrestling moment or the moment that you when you first watched wrestling that made you become the fan you are today. So it might not have been the very first moment you ever saw a wrestling match, but when you first saw wrestling and looked at some on wrestling that made you be like, yo, I'm a fan now. I want to watch this going forward. Um, I'm too I was, old to remember that in moment. I've been watching wrestling since the early 80s. So. It could be your favorite know. wrestling moment ever, too. So it could be your favorite wrestling moment is when Undertaker threw Man Cage on the top of the hell of the set. Mm. Oh, damn. Mm. Yeah, I think that's that's everybody. Um, well, everybody. Talk about the first one where he fell off yeah. the side or the choke slam through the cage? He fell off, off the, the side. side. Oh, okay. Off the side. Yeah. I knew it was off the side. The planned one. My 12 second is a close, close second. Is when Shawn Michaels called Shelton Benjamin with that um sweet chin music when Shelton Benjamin was in mid air jumping at him off that rope. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that was yeah, loud, that was a loud pop. Yeah. Ain't talking about and applause. You know, you know why I know that's one of his favorites because when at one point in time in the game he switched to a, a, a sweet chin music kick so he could start randomly kicking people. <laughs> <laughs> Out of nowhere. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Um, I'll give both of mine. The first moment that made me start watching wrestling like that was when I first saw Ultimate Warrior. So, like, as a kid growing up, like, I saw wrestling all the time because, you know, as a kid in Virginia, like, wrestling would come on late at night on three out of the four channels you had on Saturday yeah. and Friday and Saturday night. Like, it would just come on. And you USA. Would, be, and it would be random promotions. So it'll be like, you would see, like, WCW. You would see um, WWF. You would see, at, at that time, WWF. You would see, um, like, some random Smoky Mountain or some, some of them mountain wrestling jumps. And then you would see some other random jumps. Like, you would get an ECW or whatever. So it was like... Back, especially in the 80s, like every Friday, Saturday night, wrestling was on. So I stayed watching it. But the first moment that really got me into it was when Ultimate Warrior came out. And I don't know what it was about the about the face paint or whatever, but it, like actually used to get me hyped when I think he used to run to the ring. And I'd be like, oh, I'd be ready to body slam the shit out of something for no reason. Like he actually used to hype me up. And then after that, I just got into it. I remember he had that feud with Papa Shango, and then Papa Shango put the spell on him, and then he was spitting up that shit. And uh, mm. I re and then it was another episode <laughs> that, that kind of <laughs> stuck me into it. Um, it was when Undertaker was feuding with uh, Hulk Hogan. Mm. And I remember, I think it was like Hulk Hogan's hand got stuck in the casket. His hand, like they shut the casket on Hulk Hogan's hand, and he was trying to he was dragging the casket with it. <laughs> and his hand was locked in that thing. And I don't know why, but like them two moments just make me, I remember just like, yo, I love the storytelling of like this. Like it was just intriguing to me as a kid. Like, oh shit, how you gonna get his hand out there? Oh, how he gonna fight? Cause man, his hand gonna be broken. And I just fell in love with the kayfabe of it of like how they told these stories. That was like over the top, but for some reason, like they were able to make me as a kid believe it. Uh, Ultimate Warrior, I never understood one promo he ever did, but that was my favorite wrestler. So I, th that that's what. And that the Ultimate Warrior live in the hearts of. <laughs> and my favorite moment ever. That's the like, piece of Ultimate like, Warrior. The moment of all moments, I guess, would be when Stone Cold Steve Austin won the King of the Ring. And he had he had beat Jake the Snake, and he mm. said, 
to come in here and you talk about the John 316, Austin 316. So I just whipped your ass. And the way he said it, I just was like, This is fucking awesome. Yes. And, you know, and, and you've becoming like a teenager. So like at that age, like, you know, you, you, you've been new curse words and you might have said them here once, but at that point now, you just cursing up a storm behind your parents' back. So now it's like, oh, these niggas talking like me now. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's getting real. And, and he was sitting there with the busted lip and he had, had to come back from hot. Like, I just remember that moment was like, Oh, now wrestling is hard. Now I now mm-hmm. it, it ain't gonna be like, yeah, it ain't like I remember at that moment, like it, it became cool to be a wrestling fan. It wasn't like people looked at you like, oh man, you still a little kid, you watch a wrestling. It was like, oh no, everybody watching that, wrestling now. Like this shit, that, this shit hard. Like, so it was that's, cool. that's was the like, moment they said cool. started the attitude era, too. Yeah. That that moment right there. It, it was definitely either that or the uh, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels feud when Shawn Michaels was talking about Sunny Days and shit. It was somewhere around there too. Mm. When he got called, oh, no, it, he got called a degenerate because that's what the generation next came from. And then he was like, you know, I want you. And Vince supposedly say, I want you to come out there and give us some more of that attitude. And then that's where the attitude era came from. And all. But yeah. anyway, but yeah, around that time, it was it, like all of that shit was happening at the same time. It was like. NWO was already out and they were like just starting. Oh, and, that and then, been and a then on WWE, you had Stone Cold finally ending the feud with Bret Hart. He was coming into his own with the King of the Ring. And then he made that statement. And you had Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart who was having a little feud or whatever. And then you had the Montreal screw job, which exposed Vince McMahon and made him a villain. So now you had like it was like all of those things culminating within like a few months of each other. Mm-hmm. It's like boom. I got a question for you. What's up? Who do you think is the most influential person in wrestling history? To me, I feel like it's between Hogan and Stone Cold. Cause Hogan has his own era, and Stone Cold kind of defined the attitude era. I heard what you said, though. He said person. Personally? I, I, I caught that. I caught that. Which, who was the post? Uh, he said personally? No, he said the most influential person. Oh, person. I got what he's saying now. Um, I would say either Dusty Rhodes or Vince McMahon. Mm. Um, I feel like Dusty Rhodes is probably the most one of the most influential as far as bridging the gap between the South, the Midwest, and Northern wrestling. Um, and he also had a hand in so many of the bigger matches that kind of shaped the course of wrestling history. Um, whether it be as a book or helping to create the finish behind the scenes or whether it was as the actual wrestler in the, in, in the program. Um, but um, I think Vince McMahon is probably the most influential, influential because true he gave us what is modern day wrestling. Uh, you don't get what wrestling looks like today. You don't get people doing a lot of the moves. You don't get <clears throat> a lot of that without a lot of the moves that Vince McMahon made, you don't even get the production value. Of, uh, you don't get to fill arenas like that without Vince McMahon because he, yeah. get, he, he, he was able to bring so many territories together and have so many talent, he could run three shows. And when you got that much talent, you're now appealing to such a big artist. Now you can start to go for pay-per-view rights and you can start to, you know what I mean? So like his business model kind of set the stage to make it so that wrestling could be big time, big time Mm. um, and and appeal to a global market. He brought wrestling to people who had never watched wrestling before with the rock and roll, with the rock and wrestling era in the eighties by by fusing it with MTV and, you know, putting it with Cindy Lauper and like all of those Mm. strategic moves, like wrestling ain't as big as it is right now. Like it literally used to be, you would get clowned for being a wrestling fan because it was like a niche a niche market. It was like, yeah, it, it wasn't everybody out there thinking that it was a cool thing. 
Vince McMahon kind of broadened it, put it, put it to a broader audience and allowed it to be like, now it was a mainstream thing that was like, it was normal. It, it wasn't weird. It was like, ah, it, it was as easy as drinking Coca-Cola. You know what I mean? True. True. Well, as far as like the most influential person, Mm-hmm. I don't mind because I would say I am not as versed as maybe other people with wrestling or whatever. I just like who I like when I see it or whatever. Like my friend Twin could probably tell you the whole history of wrestling, pretty much. And the same same thing with my brother Sean or whatever, but Man, um, I can't even disagree with anything Ted said, man, because, like, Vince is probably the whole main reason why I know anything about wrestling. If, if anything, like, like, that's the main person I know. Like, I really don't know anybody that runs WCW. Like, I knew about Vince or whatever. Like, Eric Bischoff or whatever, they're influential. I would say he's an influential person. Um Arn Anderson or whatever. Like some of the background people, whatever. Like um Theodore Law, whatnot. Teddy. Yeah, like Oh Teddy. Yeah. Like I, I definitely say I, he was the um most influential one of them at least. And I, I I don't know. I'm just throwing out the names that I know that really did a lot of business in there and um Heyman Paul Heyman ah Paul Lee Paul Heyman because he had ECW and Mm -hmm. he talks the greatest shit as far as like a promoter like the dangerous alliance great faction mm -hmm. mm-hmm that was the name of it Mm -hmm. that was the name of it the Midnight Express and all this Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. The dangerous oh, alliance. I I didn't say my favorite wrestling moment. Um, I would say my favorite wrestling moment is the Royal Rumble, where Stone Cold is just sitting at the turnbuckle and waiting for somebody to come out. So that's that's like, like all right, you got like thirty more people to run through. You just chilling. Like, come on. Like it's that's one of my favorite. <laughs> the one um when anytime Triple H do something to him, he gets his revenge. And like you're just waiting to see how he's gonna get his revenge. Like yo, uh, when he ahead, like man. when he got put in the hospital, and at one time he yoked somebody up from the from the ceiling. Like you know how the ceiling has like the the boards you can move somebody up. And then nigga, I saw one wrestler, and he looked up. He got yoked up into the ceiling. <laughs> Whatever. I was like, oh, Stone Cold is coming. Stone Cold is coming. And anytime when there's a bunch of wrestlers, <clears throat> like Battle Royale, mm-hmm. in, the, in the middle of the ring, everybody's just fighting. And then Stone Cold comes out and just clears the ring. Stone that is my favorite moment. My favorite oh, moment. Just come through and just like, just stone cold stun everybody. And then whenever a wrestler do another wrestler's move. Mm. When they whenever when like when Stone Cold did rock bottom on rock and rock did stunner on Stone Cold, I was like, this is the greatest disrespect I have ever seen in my life. Yes, do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like, but yeah. Speaking of favorite could, moments and Stone Cold though. If you know, you know out there, wrestling fans. Because this time, you got to ask yourself, is it live or is it Memorex? And when uh, Stone Cold had uh, paged uh, The Rock, and, and, and it was a video of Stone Cold talking to The Rock, so The Rock was sitting there looking at the Titron and his pager, and Stone Cold had snuck up behind him in the ring and snuck <laughs> out. Of oh, man, like, yo. That feud between them two right. was great. Awesome. When they first started beefing, oh man, yo. Most awesome. Classic. Classic, classic. 
and the chop of your yeah. pee-pee. <laughs> My most influential person is um Jim Ross. Mm. Mm. This is a slobber knocker. I can see that. He'd been involved in both big bo- both of the biggest promotions and some of the smaller ones along the way. Yeah, yeah. Him and Lawler. Lot of char- lot of development of uh characters and uh yeah, res- wrestlers gimmicks and stuff. So yeah, I can see that. It's no stone cold without Jim Ross. Mm-hmm. A lot of low key big moves on Jim Ross' part, man. Even when after he came back with um the little um thing with his face, the Bell's positive. Um, yeah, that thing. People who I please don't think I was doing it to make fun of anything. I just couldn't think of the name, but mm-hmm. I can do. It. it looks like when it's when they when you had the condition. So mm-hmm. that's what I did. Um, not mm-hmm. to, Make life of the, the situation at all. That's not what I do. Um, but yeah, my most influential person. But um, to move on. Oh, face! Before you move yeah. on, worst okay. wrestler ever, Enzo Amari with Enzo and Big Cast. I love that team because they had like, like, they were hilarious to me or whatever. But Enzo Amari has no wrestling skills at all. His his skill is big cast throwing Enzo Moore on the wrestler, and then that's how they win. But they were funny, and I like watching them. But he was the worst wrestler okay. ever. All right, I'm done. I got one to beat that. Barry Horowitz. Who? Barry Horowitz. Barry. He pat himself on Horowitz. the back like this. <laughs> 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 oh look at this thing on the most losses. Bro. Yeah, he had a streak going, wasn't it? <laughs> so he had, like the most in the had the, the most matches. <laughs> no, the worst wrestler ever know. was the Brooklyn Brawler. You said the Brooklyn Brawler? Yeah. That's the worst. <laughs> <wrestler ever. laughs> That was the worst name ever. The Brooklyn Brawler. <laughs> he just came to the ring looking dirty. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. 